Uh, call to order the Kingston Springs, Kingston, Kingston Springs Regional Planning Commission meeting for August 8th. Um, roll call of voting members. Keith Allgood? Present. Tony Campbell? Here. Tom Cullen? Here. Tony Gross? Here. Brian McCain is absent. Mike Padnode here. Glenn Rimmick is absent. Chuck Slater? Here. Bob Solar? Here. Okay. And non voting staff, Sharon Armstrong? Present. John Lawless? Here. And Jennifer No. Here. Okay. So we do have a quorum. Um, you have the July 11th uh, meeting minutes before you. Move to approve the minutes as circulated. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So the motion passes. And you have today's agenda before you. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So the agenda passes. So uh, the first item on the agenda is old business, item 6A, uh, BP 121 well, Lyman Hills Road, uh, Kingston Springs, ROW. Just right, right, right away. Right. Okay. Um, so did you want to leave that? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at our last meeting, there was some discussion about the development that occurred on the BP lot with regard to the right of way. Uh -huh. um, when I inspected it at time four, there was no pavement. When I inspected it after the meeting, there was. Not that it occurred within that short space of time, but I had not been for a couple of weeks. Um, so, in trying to work through the resident issues, we had a meeting uh, that was attended by one of your city commissioners, also one of your planning commissioners, who just happened to be on the site the day that it went. Mr. Patel, um, the contractor, Mr. Hayes, and the Law Garrison family, who were the other party to this easement. In that meeting, we established that the Law Garrisons did not have umbrance with the use of that right-of-way. The problem for the Planning Commission is that it did not appear on the approved site plan, which we addressed in the last meeting. So, in addition to that, um, there is a drainage catchment within the pavement of the right-of-way. The drainage catchment for the BP, now Sunoco, lot is within that 50-foot right-of-way. And it's only partially paved. It's not paved all the way over to the edge of the right-of-way. The catchment was installed without coming here until last month. It was not shown in the drawings. Um, the other issue that we had is that the underground electrical service was also installed under the pavement. So we set about trying to figure out how do we deal with this dilemma that was not permitted but done. So we discovered within the original utility easement that it was a driveway use easement only, that it didn't include any appurtenances or structures or pavement of any kind. So we asked the Patels and the Garrisons how they wish to resolve that because this is an agreement between property owners and we don't invest in that. Our investment is to preserve the right of way for the use of the lot that's not developed. And our investment in this is to ensure that stormwater system is city, regardless of where the catchment lands, is not disrupted in a future date because that's an impact to us. So what we discovered is that within our subdivision regulations and within because the zoning ordinance refers to the subdivision regulations for streets and roads so when you read the zoning ordinance and you're looking at streets and roads it tells you to follow the standards and the subdivision regulations even though you're not building the subdivision so what we discovered is that you allow concrete roads who knew you have specifications for them in your zoning book what's missing from the zoning book and we're trying to hunt those down because my copy does not have them either are the technical drawings for concrete roads, which you do allow. We viewed, and I actually drove to Pearl Farms. It's in Williamson County. They had a similar issue. I reached out to the planner, asked them if we take a road windshield tour. They had a similar issue where a right of way was paved and there was drainage in the middle. So what they chose to do in that particular situation is they brought the road in as a single road unit then it split around the catchment basin to preserve the utilities and then came back together on the other side. So that is a mechanism by which we can rectify what's occurred on this property. 
the concrete exceeds the standard in our subdivision regulation for depth, density, and strength for road. This is parking lot. No parking has been striped or occurs within the pavement on the right of way. The only impediments in the right of way, and we measured them out, the catchment basin for the drainage, which is required, they have no other place to put it on the lot and the electrical utility, which is underground, underneath. So they entered into an agreement, you have it in your packet, between the property owners, and we discussed it at length in the meeting, explained to them the parameters that they needed to comply with, and that has been done and signed off on. We explained to the law garrisons that do not do this would be an impediment to development of their law in the future, and they understood that. So this agreement, to break it down in simple terms, reduces to paper the agreement to allow the concrete that is already there. They have paid half of it, half of the road surface, with his assumption, and their curb stops at the end of it. So that's why it looks like it does. With the understanding that whoever develops the lot in the future in the rear would have to pay the other side. Road plans would have to be submitted. At this point, we have nothing more than a shared driveway for access to that property. There's no in and out, there's no egress, none of that's been approved. So it's solely for the use of the property owners. So we got that resolved. We did the concrete road work around. Uh, the city has a catch-all phrase on the stormwater ordinance, but I'm gonna ask the city to amend it for strength, that if you disrupt an appurtenance connected to our stormwater system, you're responsible to repair that and put it back in original condition. The language is somewhat generalized in stormwater ordinance, and I want it to be stronger, and I want it to have specifications as to how you put it back, not just slap some concrete in a hole. So Jennifer and I are going to be working on that. We'll bring it back to you um, at the next meeting. Now, the last remaining issue for this property, um, there are a couple. One is there is a sign mass sitting in the right of way. That sign has been abandoned. It sits in the 50 foot right of way, the abandoned sign. Yeah, it's not on the Patel's property. It is not, but the there was a lease agreement arrangement between the Patel's and the law garrisons for the use of the sign. Now, again, it's like with the use of the property for the drainage catchment and the shared driveway, we don't really have a dog in the fight for how they resolve it, but it has to be resolved. It's an impediment in a right of way. Somebody has to take it down. So we're unable to issue a CO for the site plan until that impediment is removed. It can't just sit there, it's an abandoned sign. So I have explained to Mr. Patel in a conversation this week that I'm ambivalent as to who takes it down. It just has to come down. Somebody has to be responsible for it. So I told him that when I don't have the authority to issue anything, neither does the building official, to give him a CO until this is resolved, because it sits in a right of way. It's no different than if I popped one right in the middle of that road out there. Um, secondarily, who does it? I don't it's, care. But why somebody, is it their responsibility? It's not on their property. Pardon? It's not on their property. Why is it their responsibility? I, I'm not saying whose responsibility it is. I'm, I'm not saying it says the purpose of the easement agreement for the use of the sign was to benefit the Patel property in the BP. So how they so we have two parties at interest with a shared easement agreement that predates this one for the use of that 50 foot right of way. So Mr. Patel is a party to that use of that driveway. The law garrisons are a party. It's non-exclusive use. So that's an agreement they entered into together. So they both have investment in that right of way at this point. So someone has to take it down. I'm ambivalent. I'm seeking, it's not that I'm ambivalent that it comes down. Obviously I don't want it to come down. But I'm seeking direction from the Planning Commission. We can't order anybody in this situation to take it down. But what we can do is withhold the CO until it's resolved. So that's the only mechanism we have to cause that sign to come down. Okay. You need a motion for that effect? I do. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, and so the motion is 
that in order to issue a CO for that property, which is the 121 Liven Hills Road, in order to issue a CO, um, the sign has to be removed from the right of way. The sign mass has to be removed. Yeah. From the and we're not say saying who. We're not we'll saying. That. Okay, just, just and I want to make sure I have the motion for that. So we're not saying who has to remove it. We just we're just say saying that it has to be. It has to be gone right. in order to issue the CO. Um, Again, for us, we're unable to determine or sort out the circumstances of the arrangement between the parties. We don't care. Um, it doesn't matter to me, you know, what their arrangement was. That's between two private citizens and property owners. Okay. For us, it's just the right of way issue. So, um, can you state your name, please? My name is Sajid Patel. Okay. Um, um, you're welcome to say something, and we, we probably won't debate anything, but you're welcome to say something, you know, if you'd like. Uh, I just wanted to state, and I, I mentioned it to her too, I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention in the hall. In the hall. Um, that sign that's there, that was never part of our sign. When we even signed the lease, we weren't given the right to that sign, but the sign was always there attached to the gas station. But we did not, in the agreement when we leased it, if you remember, there was a house behind it, as well as there was a truck that, that was getting parked right next to it. They were leasing that space as well. So we weren't given any right to that sign, but they just didn't take it down when we rented it, uh, the building at that point. And then when our lease ended, obviously everything else ended with that. Then after a couple of years after that is when we bought the property. I believe Mr. Moore, we went back and asked him if we can uh, uh, renegotiate the lease. And he said, why? He said, you guys pay on time. I like you guys. I come here on the 30th, 30th of the first of the month, sit here, chat with you, and you guys pay me the rent, and I don't have any issues with you. So he's like, as long as I'm here, don't worry about the lease. He said, okay. Then when we bought the property, obviously that land was obviously went in the right of the way. We didn't have, a, we don't have any rights to it now also so i just don't understand why would somebody else's property sign would hinder my ceo on my property i mean i understand you know it needs to come down you know as it is did we have a use of it yes they did they put a sign up there but when we leased it it wasn't part of our you know area that they leased it to us they explicitly told us we there was nothing behind our uh, store that we had right to that's why we actually have to move the dumpster up front and get a permission to put it on that side to say we can use this side to put a dumpster because there was no other space that we could do. So when you first leased that that location, the Back sign was that sign went with the sign was for that location when you leased it, right? Well, when we leased it, the sign was there, but they never gave us the right to that sign. I understand that. Yeah, so but the sign was there advertising that location. The sign was there advertising that location. Okay, uh, the see. previous actually. Uh, it was Mr. Moore's property, and Garrison's were the ones who were leasing it. Okay. So yeah. they had it, but when they leased it to us, we didn't have any right to that. You know? Okay. I hear what you're saying. So thanks for the input. Um, if I may make yes, one comment. I understand Mr. what Mr. Patel is saying. Within the leasehold that they had, that area was included in their lease. I think what he's saying is there was a physical impediment with trucks and other structures uh, that denied them access to this. Again, I'm not telling Mr. Patel in any conversation that it's his responsibility. It just has to come down before the seal is issued because it's in the right of way that he shares access to or the other property owner. How tall was that? It's right at the end of the drop right away where the dirt is pushed up in the back of the It's just sitting right in the right of way. And it's a sign, as I understand it, uh, that originally supported that gas station. That is correct. It was part of that business at one time. That's the purpose that the sign was there for. Is that true? Yes. I mean, so, okay. So I just want to understand that. Right. Okay. Um, so, Tony, did you have? No, I'm, I'm just taking it in right now. So. We are not privy to the written agreements. Right, I understand. The use of the sign understand. at the city, so we don't know yeah. who held the lease. Has a new legal sign. We have a sign. Then our lease had ended even after 
uh, before we purchased the land. So yeah. there was no lease. I understand. At the time of the, you know, when you purchased the property. I understand what you're saying. Um, okay. Is there any other uh, discussion on the motion that's on the floor? The motion says that in order to issue the CO, the sign has to be removed by somebody who can no longer be in the right of way before we issue the CO. No other discussion? Open ended. This is an open ended uh, solution. In other words, if the sign doesn't come down, they don't get the certificate of occupancy. Period. That's correct because they share access to that right-of-way the sign is sitting in the right-of-way I understand that so for them we without any knowledge of the agreements that took place we have no way of deciphering that we just know that the sign is abandoned and it needs to be removed because it's sitting in the road so however they choose if he can provide documentation somebody can provide documentation maybe we can sort out who's responsible but the sign itself advertised to be the location for a number of years. So if without any further information, we don't know how to sort this out. We just but know it's sitting in a 50-foot right of way. It seems to me you're penalizing the Patels for something that's not their fault. And what happens if she decides not to remove it, you know? I just want to make sure we have the discussion up here. I, we, we heard your input, sir, and I, I appreciate your input. I just want to have the discussion. Thank you. So the right of way is halfway constructed, and it's not constructed as permitted. It was just constructed, correct? It was. Um, there was some confusion, I think, on the part of the applicant and owner as to what was permitted and what was approved. And we had that discussion at length. Correct. In the last planning commission meeting. And to address your question, I think Mr. Slater had a question as well. It was, and it is partially paved. The right of way is actually 50 feet. Correct. And it's partially paved on the side where the snow code goes. It is paved part of the way back to the parcel, yeah. and then there's dirt and other things, and then the standing mast. Correct. So there's no sign anymore, it's just the mast. Um, that needs to come down. And now so now there's an easement agreement. And what, uh, Mr. Slater, to answer your question, no, it's not my intent to penalize anybody. But Mr. Patel is a shared agreement for easement for access and egress that is non exclusive and unlimited to that right of way with the other property owner. They are both in that agreement together. So they both. Yeah, but the, by withholding the, 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 the CO for the Patels, you're hurting them, but you're not you're not hurting the, the other parties. We're not attempting to hurt anybody. The sign issue is a result of the Patels' use of that 50-foot right-of-way that they needed to complete their project. And the sign is sitting in that right-of-way. It has to be removed. The right-of-way cannot legally exist with an impediment. It's no different than erecting in the middle of that street. Is no. there a photo of that? Of, of which yeah. half the right of way was built upon without permit. Right. That's not so, correct either. Well, they it, approved not the correct. site plan. You, this planning correct. commission approved the site plan in its last meeting. It right. was constructed without that approval initially. Correct. But that has since been approved for that. So about the best I can figure out, 27 feet of the 50-foot right-of-way easement has been paved. Correct. Up to the mast of the sign. Correct. So again, Mr. Slater, it's not my intent to penalize anybody. We have an impediment in a right-of-way that's being used by two property owners. Someone has to address the issue. But of the two property owners, they're the ones that are being penalized because they can't get their CO. The but garrisons on the other side of that discussion their property is up for sale no development permits can be issued no building permits no plans can come before the city so it affects both property owners equally uh, mr patel is further along in his development than they are so the use of the property for the other party to this agreement they can't come forward with any plans for submission no one can locate anything on that property until it's resolved. And again, you know, I'm 
I don't have an opinion about who takes it down, but somebody, because right. they share that right of way now, has to take it down. So, you know, we have an impediment to the right of way. Yes, sir. Um, and just as a resident of Kingston Springs, we've got this very tall piece of steel sitting out there that's abandoned. Yes, sir. Uh, it's not being maintained. Yes, sir. Um, and, it, and it's just sitting there in a right of way that two people share in, you know, probably this kind of thing going on. So any commentary on this from, from your standpoint? Is, I have a question. Is sure. the, because I didn't realize it was an issue with, with the note existing sign, is the, in the plans that Patel had, are they using part of that right away yes. in their plans? If they're using it as part of their plans right. and what they presented, if this board has approved and there's an impediment in it, then I think that's where you have the issue. Their plans do not include the right of way. It stops at the back of the lot of development and does not include all the property contained in the shared agreement for use. So. It includes a portion of it? Well, the plan then, they submitted and here and is and the then they used it, and then we retro <laughs> okayed it. So, in essence, as as a planning commission, we're doing nothing to try to hurt them. We have tried to help them along all along the way, retrospectively sometimes when things weren't permitted and done correctly. So, there, there's an issue that needs to be resolved. And yeah, I, hate, I hate that it stops anything, Chuck. But there's an issue that needs to be resolved. Well, I, I agree. But but by but the the, 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 the garrisons or the laws aren't being penalized in any way where the, where the Patels are. You are being there, there, there's not just there's just nothing going on there right now. There, there can't be anything going on there. Right now. Well, that's true. But that property's been like that. I have lived here for 41 years, and that property was owned by was uh, Terry Moore. He was he was going to sell it to the town for a million dollars, and we said he was crazy. But that's how long that property's been sitting there. That's irrelevant, though. It's irrelevant, but still, you know, I feel like. All the burden is being put on the Patels because they can't they can't open their business until they get a CO. Well, I'm we not sure I necessarily disagree with you, but by the same token, it's incumbent upon the Patels to have made sure of all of these things when they were dealing with the laws to purchase the property and develop. They they had well, that's, a lot. Tony, of that's easy for you to say. You yeah, know, they, it they, is. They, you know. Maybe they're, they're they aren't as versed as we are in these matters. Well, they should have had a lot of responsibility. And what? we did talk about it, and the, the uh, when they sold it, it was under a trust, and we asked about it. I was like, what's going to happen? You know, there's a sign there uh, that says BP on it. What's going to happen? Are we still going to be able to advertise it when we buy this land or not? Or do we need to take it down? And it's not really on ours. And they said, well. Since it's not your part of the property, we're going to take it down when we don't own it. So that's between them and the law. That's between them and well, at that time, between y'all and the law. I'm sorry. It's between y'all, the Patel, and the law. Garrison's. Garrison. Well, it's the law. It's three laws. I was thinking like a department or something. We still call that. That's fine. I get it now. Larry Law used to own the Gulf Station that was there. At that time, it was under trust. And the trust company right. that handled it, that's good. they're the one who promised us this, that you can use this easement, we understand you're going to have to be asked, and we're like, we're going to need something, you know, when we go look at whatever we need to look this property, and they said, yes, we'll give it to you. Is there a base on the We go in there, we'll go to Wally Port. What? Is there a base, a concrete base on my house? That would have to be removed into the table. So, again, I've got a question on concrete. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on. Okay, so we're going to hear what this gentleman has to say. Well, who are you? I'm Russell Hayes. I'm with Hayes and Sons Construction. I'm the general contractor on the project. For the Patels? Yes, sir. Okay, sir, did you want to go ahead and state something? Concrete pavement and the catch basin, that's been on every plan that's came through this office okay it it that's the plan the plan that y'all 
I paid for the permit with right. is the exact plan okay. that I've got here okay. and matches that. It's okay, so it, it's what almost like to do we're with? doing something that we ain't supposed to, but I just build what's on paper. Okay. I'm not an engineer. I hire an engineer. Right. So we're talking about that. I understand that concrete's on the right, the right of way. We're talking about the right of way and the steel but tower. It's, the it's been on Entrance. the right of way from day one. This, this is nothing changed on that catch basin has been the exact location every set of plans that's came here. Okay, I hear you. Thank you for that. Prior to the, even the planning commission didn't get that right away. So. Thank you. I'm All sorry. right. Um, okay, anything else? No, I, mean, I would have to really sit down and look at it because I didn't realize that that was an issue. But I mean, it, it sounds like it's in a portion of the right away. But again, I, I can't just give a full legal opinion without having an opportunity to review it and give a share and get some more particular Okay, so. And that's kind of where my conversation with Mr. Patel ended this week. I need direction understand. in order to, to yeah, move forward. Yeah, I understand. And um, I mean, from, I know we have a motion on the floor. Somebody's probably going to have to help me with the rules of order here. But it, I mean, from where I sit, I'd feel better if you did a legal review before we see before we make that assignment of responsibility up to to nobody but the mm -hmm. tied to the CEO. It's, it's not gonna make any difference. They can't issue the occupancy permit until you know, it's resolved. Now whether Jennifer does it today, tomorrow, next week or next month, that's what it's gonna be. Is that that's the way I see it. Of course, the motion that you have on the table it's now is that they not issue the CO yeah. until the sign is gone, which is right. a little bit different kind of than what you're saying is that it can't be, a CO can't be issued until it's resolved. Right. Well, until the sign is gone. Well, well, those are kind of two different things. Resolved so is one thing, the sign so is gone. So, is it, so to Tony's words, until the sign is gone. So as far as that motion being on the floor, we won't use the word resolved. And, and to my knowledge, Lisa has contacted a sign company to take it down. When they're taking it down, I do not know. That's fine. She only told me that she has contact with the sign. That's okay. all. Okay. So as far as this motion that we have on the floor. So the motion already, that you have on the floor right. is that a CO will not be issued until the sign is down. taken down. Right. That's totally different than until it can be resolved. You don't have any concerns with that particular motion? Well, yes, if, you, if, you, if you do that motion and it it's not correct it's legally, then we're right. stuck with that motion until we come back in front of this board to reconsider that motion. So if we don't do the motion, they still don't get the CO. They still wouldn't get the CO right. until we can resolve something. That would be but something about responsibility in relation to removing the sign right. and then, have, then the sign being removed. Right, but if y'all make that motion, yeah. then it's it's kind of set stone. I withdraw my motion. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> so, <laughs> but then that's subject to you coming back with a review. Yes, and, okay. and getting with Sharon and maybe see if we can get this resolved. Well, in the meantime, hopefully the Patels will get after Lisa to try to get it taken care of. Well, I've been in contact with her. She says she contacted a sign company. I talked to the guy, but I don't. You got to just stay on her. So we're I can't tell her what to do on her property. Though. Well, right. Mr. Chairman, we have a motion on the table well, with the percent decision, but we need whoever seconded that motion. So whoever seconded the motion, will you second the decision? It wasn't me. Oh, it was me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're all okay. What did I do? So that motion's been received. So that motion's rescinded. Um, and at this point in time. We're, we're still not issuing a CO, but we're going to await legal review, and we'll we'll address this at the next meeting and where we want to go. Yes. I have one question then of the plan. At the corner, the I guess it'd be the southeast corner of the Patel's property is a pot pit. There's water standing in that two thirds of the time. Yes, sir. it's because the drainage has been blocked by that. That needs. Not get that taken care of. We can, and that's going to be part of the final inspection of the COS issue. Well, issued. I just, right. that bothers me a lot, but I've got a couple people that are just worries to hell. I, I think there's some question, um, Mr. Campbell from T. 
TDOT as to how that right of way can be connected to Lyman Mills Road. So any work that's done that attempts to connect it permanently to the road is an issue, but we can have it graded suitably to take care of the drainage issue. Well, uh, just until we right. want to make sure there's not a puddle here. Yes, sir. Because I'm sure that all of that down through there is going to change when the TDOT does so that project, I would assume. And then one other item for this, you have in front of you the new easement agreement that was provided to you for this project. And then we will need to accept this because it modifies the original easement agreement for the use of the right one. Has our attorney reviewed it? Yes. She's yes. comfortable with it? Yes. I'm ready to approve it. Second. All right. Um, all in favor of approving this new easement? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Steve? Aye. Okay. All right. Okay, so we approve the easement. We approve the easement. I still have a question if you don't mind. Um, about the old still the signage. Uh, you guys just said the seal won't be issued until the next meeting. That pushes me back one more month. So we said we, we need legal review. Um, uh, but I when would we then when would we then me back uh, another month, which address is, it? If they take the sign down, it's, the problem goes away. Yeah, and if not, that can be something Sharon and I can do an internal review, and if there's any issues, we can bring it back. If it's not resolved, bring it back to the board next month. Okay. So, yeah, it would be brought back in front of the board next month. Like unless Sharon it's adds them in the summer. Lisa, Lisa gets the sign tore down. It doesn't but make I still any don't difference. understand why am I being penalized for somebody else's signage that's there. Well, I didn't buy that land. Yeah. When they sold it with me, they told me that they were going to take it down when they develop it. Well, so we're perfect. okay, Mr. Patel. So where we are right now is is you raised the question, and we considered it, and now we're going to get a legal review, so we have a better understanding. Of what we're doing. I understand that. I understand that. I don't know about that because it's costing me a lot of money to sit there with the empty building that's almost done. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's an issue between you and law garrison or between no, your sir, I, I brought and that to the city and if there was an issue i should have been told in the beginning that that sign is an issue that needed to be handled i had a year and a half to discuss it with miss garrison or anybody in the city or any for you guys to you know well you get a legal counsel what right now where i said we are is where we are and um we're, we're going to go to legal review if I may address some of the questions are being asked on permission. There is no statement that's been made tonight that this sits for a month. It doesn't have to come back to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission, we are making you aware of an impediment to a right-of-way agreement that you approved for the details she used in conjunction with the law Pharisees. All it requires is removal of the structure from the right of way in order for the CO to be considered an issue. Besides that, there's nothing for us to say. That's a normal customary building right. inspector yeah. activity. Yeah. So once the sign structure is removed that impedes the agreement that he entered into with the other property owner, we're good. Yeah. That can be issued without our approval as the sign's going. But that's what I'm saying. What if he decides not to remove that sign? Then where am I at? Then we're at legal review and attempting to come up with a solution for you. Because there's an impediment to the That's right like saying the Mexican so restaurant got a property next door. They got a exactly. sign up front saying a captain's office. I, I, li listen, I, we are where we are, and so I have to ask you at this point to sit down. I mean, I don't have my answers. That's why I was standing up. The, the answer we have right now is the sign has to be down before a CO can be issued. However, we're going to do a legal review to see if there's another answer. Um, okay? Yes, sir. So, all right. So, the next item is uh, 6B. That's the uh, zoning ordinance. And yes. that's included in the packet, right? Yes, Chairman, if I could, y'all had approved this at your last meeting. However, the county came. That the they are, fee? Yes, 
they're, they're changing things, tweaking things, and I, I'm not sure that they're at a final destination, I guess, with all of that. So based upon that, I changed the wording. And the only thing that is different in what you approved last month and this month is Section C. And it deals with the collection of these taxes. Mm -hmm. It basically just says that we are not going to collect those, but that we will ensure that they are collected by some form of a receipt, mm -hmm. um, whatever the system is to get that information. Um, it's my understanding they're going to maybe do some things via the computer system and going back and forth with that. But that is the only change to this. And because it is a somewhat substantial change, I wanted to come in to come back in front of the Planning Commission for approval before the board votes on it as a whole. But that is that is the only change. And then this would just again have us responsible to have the contractor, developer, whoever it is, just provide us receipt. Mm -hmm. I know whatever county fees that may be in effect. Right. We would not be collecting that, but just yeah. And if the county ever came to the city and wanted us to collect those, which they can by statute, and by statute we also have a right to charge a fee. But at this juncture, we're not anywhere close to that. Right. So we're just asking um, to make that one modification, just to clarify. Okay. Motion to approve this ordinance as amended. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so recommend approval on that ordinance. Okay, item C, um, the Sudden Service Shell Station, 129 Lyman Hills Road, and that's cooler edition. This submission was done by the Sudden Service um, in front of you as a set of plans. Um, have you had a chance to look at these? So the proposal and the plans for the construction of this proposed unit have been reviewed by the building official and approved from a building perspective. So in working with the applicant through this, I had a concern that where it was located at the back of the building is marked as a blue lane or road. So I was a little concerned about putting this cooler addition in a blue road. So I discussed that with the applicant. The applicant will remark <coughs> that building. It's only used to service the rear of the building. We didn't want it marked as a through road, so somebody would get misguided when they were coming around the building and then run into the cooler trying to exit through there. There are two drive through lanes in addition to the through road location at the back, which you can see on the site plan. I think there's a smaller version in your pack or a larger version in front of you. It's the full lines so we can all the second sheet I think it's, it's, it's just it's a cooler yeah. and I assume that the purpose of this cooler is so that they will have more availability for storage of the product. So as you look at your plan set for the site plan which is the second sheet it's the red area that you see right here. Yeah. So may I approach yeah. uh, in the front so that it's easier for everything. So as we look at these plans and this plan set, this road here was right. marked as a blue road. It's actually painted on the pavement, but it's a blue road. So when I saw this on that third road, I'm like, okay, that's a problem. So we have a drive through lane here, a drive through lane here. They will restrike this and they will close it as a through road. So there's bright yellow paint now. So I just need somebody to edge it around and run it to the cooler. Mm -hmm. uh, the building official has signed off on the cooler plan. Aesthetically, I don't think it's the prettiest thing I've ever seen, mm -hmm. but it serves the purpose they need to. It meets uh, the building code. It falls within the site plan requirements if you wish to approve it. So when you talk about closing off that road. I don't um, think they're going to close just it. Just a lane. Right. Just a lane. Yeah. So will delivery trucks still be able to go yes, that lane? Yes, they will. They will still have access. Get to Arby's. Right. Yeah, I was just wondering if the car could think they can drive in here. Well, well they probably they could, could happen, and that was my concern with seeing it this way. But right now, uh, it's marked with bright yellow paint that says you can drive through it. If they take that out okay. and make it a little less appealing to drive through it, okay. then it probably won't because the drive through lanes for the Arby's are on the other side of that. Um, when I was there today looking at the site, there was a service truck. They're doing some work on a car wash and a roof, and the service truck pulled in. 
and could drive through. It's going to make it a little tighter to exit out the other end of the cooler is. Um, I would really like to see them maybe discourage traffic just in general through there if they can by painting out that through road label and they would agree to do that. Okay. okay. So is that was that your only concern then? It was. The construction plans look good. Uh, Everything else looks good. There's sufficient width for the service truck to get through there. They just have to watch where they go with their service truck so they can get through. And that was my only concern with the plan was that was marked as Okay. Let's go with So we have motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? All right, so uh, the next item is new business to McPherson property, map 96K, parcels 33, 35, 36.01, and that's the proposed R3 RPUD development. So this says consideration of concept plan, including revised site grading, utility plans, and traffic study. Um, now, I. You will not see a plan set. Okay, I didn't see anything on that. Um, this is a discussion item only. That's okay. I don't see a plan set because I don't want there to be any consideration right. of approval at this point because the zoning will be for the second time on the 15th of this month by the city commission. Okay. So we can't approve anything or disapprove anything until that zoning is set okay. for the RPUD and for the property. But I invited Mr. McPherson uh, here tonight and Mr. Luna, one, because I wanted to congratulate him. They have worked really, really hard. Uh, to get that lot in shape. Uh, I don't know if you've all had a chance to look at it, but it's a major improvement over where we began. I run by it every morning and it looks good. It looks really, really good. And they have not exceeded um, at all the bounds towards development. And until the, and if and rezoning is approved, I always have to say if because I never predict what you guys are gonna vote or what the city commission's gonna vote. But if it's approved, um, then they can begin the process with the Planning Commission starting in September um, to present the plans to you in a formal way for the regrading. They also had a request to install additional fill on the property. And again, I was not able to accommodate that request because until we approve the development project, they can't put fill on the lot towards that project. So, but I did want to invite him here um, and I wanted Mr. McPherson to be aware that the Planning Commission has begun discussions in recent months about housing and the need for affordable housing in Kingston Springs. And like with many projects that lie adjacent to Lyman Hills Road, the traffic study is always going to be a, a topic of discussion. They have done one. Um, the units that are proposed, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. McPherson, are 54 units at this point, I believe. Uh, James, 45. 45. So, as it was presented originally at 54, I think now it's at 45. They're taking into account the topography and the lay of the land, some other things that occur. There's a blue line stream on the property as well. So, they have been, for the past several months, responsive. They have done this in a responsible way. They have had their geotech engineer examine each lift for the install. So the next time Mr. McPherson attends the meeting, we'll have a formal plan set with grading. Uh, the first request would be obviously a grading plan, which is what we started all these months ago, a new grading plan. So at that point, we'll review that document, bring it to you, uh, depending on the outcome of the August 15th City Commission meeting. But I just wanted to give you an update. It looks substantially different. We also had a request for them to begin uh, work on the rear parcel, the one in the very back that hasn't been touched as of yet. And I explained to Mr. McPherson that we were unable to accommodate that request because, again, it's not been rezoned for that work. So no steps towards development can take place unless and until the uh, rezoning takes effect. And we have had a comment previously about a requirement for core, for core drill? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, at this point, they have almost finished with phase one. They're doing the final stages of that. And part of the ground that's going into phase one is now stacked on top of phase two. 
So we're unable to get to phase two until the rest of that works, uh, until the rest of that work is done removing the stored clean sorted fill from phase two and putting it on phase one. And this is fill that was already on the site, it's been separated, it's been checked, it's been photographed and lifted and compacted. So until they remove the remainder off of phase two that was being used for storage temporarily, we can't really get that core drill because the dirt is Okay, so that's where it is at this point in time. Right. Okay. So, and that, I have spoken to a company um, in Dixon. The gentleman has a relatively extensive history with geotechnical reports. He will take the geotechnical report with your permission uh, that Mr. Goff, his engineer, has done, do the core sample in the areas that we need them where the apartments are going, and render that report for under $800. Which is a talk to, talk to the mayor. Pardon? Talk to the mayor. <laughs> it is a Mr. McPherson um, has been advised that's charge uh, because they proceeded without the permit um, <coughs> in that compact. But I am pleased with the progress on the side. I think it looks really good. Uh, the work has been done in a very efficient and uh, well compacted way. So we're going to have a much more stable environment. So at this time, we want to have Mr. McPherson. Um, for that right? Direction for Mr. McPherson from today forward is that I believe he plans to attend the city commission meeting next week on Thursday, same time, same location, uh, for the second reading of the ordinance. If that ordinance successfully passes on second read, then he can come back in September here to begin the process of the development rather than NOV. So once that core drill clears for phase two, the second lot, once that core drill comes clean, um, then we can lift the NOV so he's no longer under a notice of violation. So, so is there anything else to discuss on that today other than your update? That's it. It's just the update, and he wanted to come because I explained to him that the concept for, I wanted him to give you, in his words, a general kind of concept of how he sees this. Uh, looking at the plans in abstract and black and white, uh, sometimes don't fully really capture what the developer's intent or desire is. So Mr. McPherson, can you, if you don't mind, would you take a second and just kind of tell them how you see that lot developing out? Yeah, could I mention something about the, the core drilling first? Sure. Okay. Um, if y'all want to look at these, these plans are not the, the, the new ones, but if y'all want to uh, sort of look those over. They can look at them as a concept, but until your rezoning is approved, they really can't comment on them. Um, well, now what did you want me to discuss? Uh, yes, sir. I just kind of wanted, I do, but I mean, they can't really give you uh, a lot of feedback because the rezoning okay. is not approved until next week or if it's approved next week. Okay. The, uh, the thing that I want to talk about, the, the core drilling, all right, uh, on uh, phase two, we ended it completely and took the uh, unsuitable field, hauled it off, and uh, uh, Mrs. Armstrong and uh, and John both came out and inspected it. <coughs> Said it looked good. We can start filling it up. All right, we started with with uh, started filling it up. We had our geo engineer come out when he did the first lift, second lift, third lift, fourth lift. Every t every time we took pictures, photos each time and uh, sent them to Mrs. Armstrong and to Mr. Lawless. The, uh, we found out later, we did not know this, that we're supposed to get a $50 permit. And they, they know in all the time that what we were doing and knowing that we did not have the permit we did not know that. Mr. Luna, I was not there at the time, but Mr. Luna assured me, he said, they told me that I could go ahead and start filling and getting the geotech each time we did a lift. We did this. They knew each time that they got a, a photo, 
each time they got information from the geo man that we did not have a permit and so then all at once I get a stop work order on it and I said what's this all about come find out beside them calling me up say look Mr. McPherson you're doing a great job down there you need to go buy a $50 permit they didn't do that they says you gonna have to get core drilling and all these things and, and uh, my uh, geo engineer did the same thing to phase two that we're doing to phase one right now no different except I did not have that permit but the Luna says they didn't tell us that and uh, I, read, I read an email that we supposed to we made a mistake beside the city calling us and telling us look you goofed up go down there and get a, a $50 permit it seems like it's unfair to me because we made this mistake it was an honest mistake we done everything right we took the photos and sent to them the geo man spent almost four thousand dollars testing each thing make sure there's no unsuitable fill in there and also making sure that each lift was uh, the compaction was done correctly i guess it's all i have to say that but i felt like the city should have just called and said hey go down and get a permit and we'd have gone down there that day like we always do wrote a check out got the permit and we'd been fine but all at once i get an email to stop work order it's it just seemed, it seemed like just basic courtesy that's all i have to say thanks sir well but you're moving along now <clears throat> yeah but, see, but she's still I, but you're moving along now well i'm on phase one yeah I mean, but i'm speaking of phase two though but you're progressing on your project you're, you're talking about there's something that, that bothers you from the past that's what you're talking well, about well it, right? it's, it's it's something she's saying that, that i'm gonna have to have core drilling mm -hmm. and i've done the same same thing to phase one neither one of them is different both of them are the same except i did not get the 50 dollars permit that i was not aware that i was supposed to get Okay. the city saw each day what I'm doing I hear you and if they just call and say look Mr. McPherson you heard tonight saying you're doing a good job but just courtesy okay did you want to you know was there going to be any comment did you want to talk about no. this project no that's not now right because there's no FUD approved. I mean, there's no. I, mean, well, I think so that was what the, what, what the point was. He was going to tell us kind of about what he was doing. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, you have any way I can take anything? I mean, you need to know. I, I don't think there's any need for you to tell okay. us what you're doing unless you There do. really isn't. I was simply making you aware because I had been informed by some of Mr. McPherson's team, development team, that they were making changes to the plan. Right. Originally submitted to you was 56 lots, then it was reduced to 54, it's now been reduced to 45 mm -hmm. as a result of the work on the property. Right. Uh, I can discuss Mr. Conspiracy's comments if you would like, but I really don't think there's okay. any. Okay, no, I, I, I mean, I, we've addressed them. You told us what you wanted for these meetings. Okay. So, is there nothing else then on that? Is it. Well, one of the emails that I should receive from her that, that uh, from Mrs. Armstrong saying that that she may go along with uh, allowing my geo engineer taking that so as far as I know it wasn't in stone that we were going to have to do the core drilling but it sounded like tonight it is in stone and, uh, and I, I th I, if, if I do have to do it I mean I have I, I have to but it seems like it's very unfair. I don't understand. No issue. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other business up here? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, what about Saturday? Saturday meeting at. Oh, I'm sorry. Saturday meeting at five. I apologize. 
apologize. We have Mr. Collins here. I think I mentioned to you last time that Mr. Collins, who owns Midtown and Suites, uh, was doing some updates and had some future plans for the building. I had a meeting with Mr. Collins last week, uh, before last, I believe. Yes. It was our first meeting. And we discussed the mobile home park and the uh, motel in general. And I'm pleased to inform you that Mr. Collins um, expressed that he has plans within the next six months to eliminate the mobile home park. Is that um, the new room? There? Yes, and that's why we, these are the new, those are the new rooms at the um, Midtown in, in Suites. The rooms are being completely redone, they're being repainted, they have new bathrooms, they have new furniture, they have new everything. So there's a lot of updates that are being done. And Mr. Collins also expressed that he has begun a traditional model of rental for the rooms per night rather than longer term. Uh, we walked the mobile home park today. We had a very frank discussion about the mobile home park. And if you can, John, advance that. Mr. Collins wishes to apply for, at some point, a special exception on that lot for an upscale RV resort park with underground utilities, a swimming pool, kind of a community clubhouse on little, these used to call them commissaries back in the day, where you can go in and pick up supplies that you need separated from the motel unit uh, so that those two populations don't navigate together um, and some other improvements new water new sewer and other improvements including the landscaping <coughs> so as we had this discussion i was really pleased that he had come to that decision and we wanted to um, those are the new bathrooms that are going in as we speak now there's going to be some improvements to the exterior of the building there's an existing storage building that's going to be leaving um, because it's a fire code issue. It's too close to the building itself. And there's some other things that we've been working on looking at. Um, he also expressed to me today that the stair repair that's noted in the state report will be done uh, for the motel as well. So if you can advance that to the site plan, did you not get it? Oh, right. I see you have a second email. I'm sorry. Um, there is. Chris, do you happen to have that with yeah, you? Yeah, I think so. I apologize. I thought we had that loaded for you. Yes. What's, what's the acreage on that piece? Pardon? The trailer park piece, what's that. the acreage on? Uh, a little over four. Four? Yeah. You've what changed, you Chris. Some of us didn't recognize A little bit, yeah, shaved, kind of. <laughs> <around here. laughs> About 10 years older than last um, time. Yeah. Like we discussed that the plans that Mr. Um, I'm sorry, his last name escapes me at the moment. It's been a really long day. Um, Mr. Collins has for the park at the rear are a massive improvement over the current situation there. Oh, so you, really you can blow it up maybe. But it's um, the old drive is on kind of underlayment, uh, new drive. He the original plan is I want to do more of a resort style with majority pull throughs. Uh, for some reason, my initial drawing shows um, pull ins and back, up, back ends, so he still has to work with that. Um, that's showing 34. I'll probably, it probably like close to like 25 to 28 is what it will actually end up being because the, just the crowd that I'm going for is the big class A's, you know, the half million dollar buses. They, have no place to park this close to Nashville. Uh, just trying to feel that need. And um, before I get too financially involved with it, I just want to get y'all's feedback. Um, kind of see the direction if, eh, or. Makes sense. Yeah. Those a series of pads? Yes. Yeah. It's uh, all concrete pads, and it'll have underground utilities, uh, pet area. Um, Picking bar, uh, I don't maybe like a tennis court. I'm not sure what he meant by that, um, but it's on the drawing. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no
pickle bar. I have three spots for a pickle bar. Whatever that is. It kind of looks like a, maybe, maybe like a court score or something? Like a tennis pickle court or a yeah. basketball court or... Yeah, there's something called there's a pickle, pickle, pickle ball. ball that's okay, maybe that's what it is. It's played on a bat or a court. Yeah, it's a combination of several sports. All right, well, there's three of those. You're going to have to be good at that. I just, you can have a pickle volley. Yes. So I'm not an expert on it. <coughs> this thing. But my, my concern is that you know if there are any obstacles you have to cross, <coughs> ordinances or anything else, that you're well aware of that. Yeah, no, that's yeah. not like I plan to do stuff by the book and being around here for a while. <laughs> I know that the, um, the city already expects certain things such as all new sewer, all new water, <coughs> all new electrical. Um, it's things that I already expected. It's already been planned for. Um, but it's just uh, the concept really is kind of if y'all would like to see something that promotes <coughs> uh, yeah. tourism to the exit or if y'all would rather have a something else for me to look at to develop that part. Well, I think we want to see it upgraded. Yeah, I think that's the big thing. Get the eliminating the, the, the trailer park is that's stepping in the right direction there. <laughs> the, the, the only downside is is I'm gonna the the lack of labor force in the city is going to hurt yeah. that. It's um, uh, I've always tried to um, help people when I've been labeled as such as um, giving people a chance uh, in in the past and I have the reputation that I do but um, that's a problem that we have here yeah yes and further the problem is there's no place for them to live no it's, it's it, like it's hard I'm hiring for everybody now um, I'm actually having to pay more just to get people to come to Kingston Springs to work yeah so that's I mean it's a struggle that local business people have um, it's, it, that, that's one downside to it mm -hmm. it's going to create more problems that y'all all aware of anyhow anyways I think it's great okay, okay. so we had a, a somewhat candid conversation today um, and he understands that these can't be occupied long term they can't be parked and left um, there are female restrictions for those there's building code restrictions for that so they're not meant to be long-term yeah. housing. And I think for uh, the town, it will be an improvement. It will also feed the businesses that are along the corridor already um, and bring people to those areas as well. So I appreciated Mr. Collins' cooperation. No, no $200 a week rooms. No. I haven't been $200 in Three years. <laughs> Three hundred. <laughs> yeah, they were just so I could get people to kind of the, the way I've had to adjust, try to eliminate my problems. I keep, keep jumping up the ranch. And um, now, even with the mot motel, the um, I do take I do not take cash payment, and um, it's credit card only. So hopefully, that's eliminated or during my problems. But it's. Alright, okay. Anyway, I just wanted right. you all to get kind of an idea of what Mr. Collins is Thank you. Well, 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 appreciate it. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. You want to talk about the Saturday event? Saturday yes. event, 5 o'clock? 5 o'clock. We're going to I'm going to have a series of maps, vacant land. <laughs> Those maps are going to contain a series of topography, flood areas, little line streams, limitations. And as we look at this vacant land and we look at the future, as an example, the Wall Garrison property is now on the market for sale. Mm -hmm. So I would much rather that the city look at a proactive growth model than a reactive growth model. So as we look at these things, we can start to understand the infrastructure that will be required, the improvements that will be required, <coughs> the traffic impact, and we'll also better understand what happens when you say, I want to do that. Exactly. Um, what process do we go through in order for you to get from I want to do that to a finished product? Mm -hmm. So that's basically what we're going to cover. We're going to tie. We have a development to it in a, a little more 
intrinsic way uh, to answer some of the community questions that pop up all the time. The one thing I want to throw in about that is, is try to get some people to come do it because I, 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 as much you know, I, I, as much as I follow the, the social media stuff like that, you know, people have a lot to say about what's going on with yeah. development in this community. Um, but then, as I've tried to share this event with them, they seem to show little interest in coming to it. So we need to to okay. really encourage people as okay. strongly as we can to come. I'm going to push people. But Typically Saturday evening, I think it's just a loser or something. Might be. Well, we but thought that we might capture, uh, if we could, from the tape, questions that surface in the meeting and then give written responses to those okay. and put them on right. where they can be seen on social media and other platforms so that as these questions continue to surface in public discussion, there is a written answer to that question that they can be directed to so that there's not so much or multiple versions of the same answer. Yeah, so is it a database like an FAQ database? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, not yet. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. That doesn't need a second. <laughs> Meeting adjourned.